Just a couple weeks ago, I created a video on testing out techniques from other card makers, meaning I've come across a card making technique on YouTube and I wanted to try it out for myself and give you my thoughts on it. This is in no way to criticize crafters that put their content out there, but rather to highlight them and give it a try and see if maybe I can add something to it. Now today I'm going to be looking at two techniques and one of those techniques I'm pretty sure can be easily done with a different tool. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna be using the stamp wheel for this one, and if you have trouble with layering stamps, then this is a technique for you. If you don't have the stamp wheel, no worries, I'm gonna show you as well how you can do this with the Misty Stamping Tool or any stamping tool that you own. Um, but the stamp wheel was what Therese used in her video, so I wanted to give her technique a try. Now, when I saw her technique, I also thought right away that I have a better way of doing this or a more efficient way, um, but I think she proved me wrong. <laughs> so I'm grabbing a six by six sheet of paper. You can see I have a little shim on the side. And what is important when you add your first layer is you don't cross the center line up and down or side to side. So if you're using a six by six sheet of paper, you might want to mark off the three inch area up and down and side to side because you don't want to overlap that. And what's great about this technique is it allows you to create several cards or several of these flowers at once because this is my all-time favorite layering stamp, but there's a lot of layers to it. So when I get it out and I start stamping, I am going to be stamping a bunch of these so I don't have to go in and stamp these a second time. Okay, and this is going to help you do that. So the way Therese showed this technique is she stamped it four times in each corner and she started with the first layer and stamped all the first layer. She went to the second layer, stamped all the second layer, third layer, stamped all the third layer. And you're doing quarter turns here. So if you have your stamp wheel marked like I do, you can see I put some vinyl numbers that I cut out with my Cricut on the each petal. I like to call this a flower, the plate that goes on the top because it kind of looks like a flower. You're going to be doing it at one, five, nine, and 13 turns, okay? So those are the petals that you're counting each time. So when you're doing this, you are saving a ton of time because you don't have to line it up four different times while you're doing this. And then, like I said, the more cards you actually do, so if I grabbed another six by six sheet of cardstock, I could do four more flowers or 12 flowers or 16 flowers, you know, however many I want. So this is a really great technique when you want to create a bunch of these flowers because layering stamps can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, and you know what? It just makes anything that makes it easier is perfect for me. So I'm grabbing my next few colors here and I'm going to show you what I think you can do in order to make this maybe easier or maybe less time consuming. So what I did was I stamped my very first layer here just normally like I did at the one turn. The nice thing about this um, stamping wheel, I find this is my first time using it, uh, is that when I place it down, it's not gonna get onto my cardstock until I have it perfectly lined in the, in the stamp wheel itself. Um, I really thought I wouldn't like this tool because the Misty is just easier with the hinge but I actually kind of do. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't find the flipping of the lid and placing it down all that tedious, but I am going to do a full review in the next little while once I've used this a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab my second layer now and I'm going to line it up on my first image that I've already stamped and I'm going to quarter turn my plate. Okay, so I can pick up the stamp. So now I have two of the layers on here at the same time. So this is going to save me a little bit of time in that I don't have to, um, you know, I'm gonna be stamping two things at one time versus the way Therese did it, she was stamping one thing at a time. So it does take um, a little bit more of lining up in between, but like I said, this makes it really worth it when you're doing multiple papers full of flowers. So when you're creating them in bulk. I'm gonna do a quarter turn again, which this time I'm at the nine, and I'm going to pick up that third tool, and now I can ink up everything at the same time. Now this isn't necessarily a method that I would recommend if you're going to get confused with your ink pads and which colors to stamp where, but for me, I've done a ton of layering stamping, so for me, it's very clear. I stamp, or I ink up all three of these colors, and then I'm good to go. And once all four of them are on there, like I said, it gets quite easy. And nobody said that you have to stamp in the order that it said. So if you continue going on and on and you're stamping things in not in the appropriate order, I guess you could say, it usually doesn't make too much of a difference in the colors when you're using dye inks anyway. 
The order of the stamps is mainly important for when you're lining them up. So not necessarily when you're stamping. All right, so Therese's way of doing this where you do each layer separately is going to be really beneficial. And then if you're more of a complex stamper and you really understand your layering stamps well, you can do it like myself, be a little bit more time efficient and get more flowers done. All right, I promised to show you how you could do this with your Misty. So placing this in the corner, six by six piece of cardstock, just like I did with the stamping wheel. But instead of turning the lid each time, all you're doing is turning your paper. Now this is more of a take on Therese's technique. Um, you could technically add more layers like I did too. I just find this to be quite easy, time efficient, and yeah, I'm able to do this just a lot faster with the Misty stamping tool than I am with the Altenu tool. So seeing this work kind of in advance and not moving the lid, but moving the Misty, you can see that this is a little bit more time efficient. Just popping in with a friendly reminder, if you enjoy this series, if you enjoy my videos, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to help me get to that 100,000 silver button. I'm getting closer by the day. Now the next technique I've seen several times from several different creators using magazines in order to print on a gel print and make a transfer image. These are really, really cool technique. And I went and followed a tutorial from Lou Collins on YouTube because many of them use stays on ink as their base layer. And I like the fact that Lou used black paint because I don't have any stays on ink. All right, I am adding a thin layer of black paint onto my gel plate. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a magazine photo. So you need some sort of like glossy paper magazine type of print. And I'm going to put this down onto the black paint. The black paint is still at this point wet. I don't believe you want it to be dry. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go over it with my fingers and burnish it into the plate. And then what I'm going to do is remove the magazine page here, which is going to remove a significant amount of the black paint. And when I remove it, you will see that there is an impression and the writing and everything comes off. All right, the next step is to add some white ink over the image once this has dried. Now, I want to just state the fact that I had done about 10 different photos of these and I'm showing my best two. There are a lot of factors that go into doing this technique that maybe you don't see on Instagram and YouTube. So for example, the amount of black paint that you use really does matter. It can't be too thick, it can't be too wet. Um, the amount of white paint you're using, the making sure that the image behind it is truly dry. All of these factors affect how this is going to turn out. And so I just want you to know that when you sit down, if you want to try this technique, have a lot of magazine paper ready and just experiment and try not to get frustrated. Sit down without any expectation of it turning out perfectly and then go ahead and try and experiment because this does take practice. So the white paint that you're using, you don't want to have a thick layer of it at all. And now what you're going to do is grab your sheet of paper. And the nice thing is this doesn't have to be any good cardstock. Regular printer paper will work for this thin paper. Um, sometimes I use Nina Exact Index. That's a lot cheaper than the Nina Solar White. I think it's about $10 for a ream of 250 sheets. Um, so that's one thing I do like about this. And I believe it also works on tissue paper, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. I know gel printing in general looks great on tissue paper, so I just assume it does work. So you can see here, my impression isn't the best, but it does work. Now, if you wanna have a laugh, I took a picture of King Charles out of the magazine and made him look like one of those white walkers from Game of Thrones. You also, once you let your impression dry on your plate, don't need to use white paint, you can use another color as well. This impression turned out really good as well, except for one of Kate Middleton's eyes looks like it's bugging out, but the rest of the image looks quite great. And in the end, after about 10 or 15 different magazine pulls here, I decided to just continue gel printing to give myself a little bit of success from my crafty session that day and make some pretty backgrounds. Now, if you enjoyed these two techniques and want to see more, check out these techniques that I often forget about video in which I explore techniques that are absolutely amazing in card making, but somehow always end up on the back burner. See if these techniques end up on your list as well and give them a try. 
I'll see you over there.